Greetings, it is Maxo Diddley here, and today I'm here with another Java tutorial to help you get an A in your coursework or exam. And today we're here with how to do simple text prediction. So essentially, text prediction is when a user is typing in an input and the system gives certain phrases or words based on what you're typing to try and predict what you're going to type. So then you can just hit enter, tab, tap the thing being predicted to save a bit of time. Like when you search for something in Google and it gives loads of suggested things to search for. So firstly, we have got a string which will represent the user input. Then we've got a string array called phrases to list and it's going to be equal to generate predicted text and we're going to pass in our input string and a false. We'll go into more on what's going on with this function when we write it. Then we're going to do a for loop and it's simply going to be for int i equals zero. i less than phrases to list dot length i plus plus and we're going to do a little system dot out dot print line phrases to list i. What's going on here? We're going to print out every phrase to list from the phrase to list string array. Obviously in your program you might have it as a bunch of phrases that appear in a drop down window or maybe some buttons to click to autofill your text field but here we're just going to print them out to the screen. So let's get right into our three methods that we're going to have to write to make this work. But firstly we're going to be sourcing our phrases from a text file so if you're in NetBeans you can right click on your project folder go to properties and then you can find the project directory. For this tutorial, we're simply going to have the text file in the directory so we can just reference the text file. If we look inside, we've actually got a list of some Pokemon card sets. I think this is a good data set to represent what we're doing here because most of the phrases actually start with the same few words and then venture off into their own unique letter compositions. So I think it can help really demonstrate what's going on here. So let's get into it. So the first method we're going to work with is public static string array. Generate predicted text. String user input and boolean case sensitive. So we're going to make this system have the option for you to decide if you want a match to be case sensitive or not. An example of case sensitive might be, let's say we type in sun and moon, but the s and the m at the start of sun and moon are lowercase. If it's case sensitive, no match will be found. But if it's case insensitive, we'll have a bunch of phrases pop up like sun and moon ultra prism, sun and moon team up, sun and moon and broken bonds and so on. So inside of our generate predicted text method, we're going to have only two lines of code. Firstly, string array list of all phrases equals get words Pokemon card sets.txt. So what we're going to do here is we're going to read every phrase from the text file and we're going to store it in this string array. And we're just going to pass in, our, pass in our file path into the get words function, which we're going to write in a moment. Then what we're going to do is we're going to do a return statement and we're going to call our generate phrase list function. And we're going to pass in the user input, which is the string here, which is going to have the value of the user input in the main method. We're going to then pass in list of all phrases, which is our string array we have just declared and assigned values to in the line above. And we're going to pass in our case, case sensitive boolean, which is our boolean here, which is what we're going to pass in with the highlighted text there. So let's create our get words function. Before we continue, make sure you have java.io.buffered reader imported, java.io.fileReader, java.util.arraylist and java.util.collections imported. Now let's get right into the get words function. So it's a public static string array and it's called gets words and we're going to pass in a string which is our file path. Firstly, we need to create an, a string array list and we're going to call it phrases. 
So we're going to do array list string phrases equals new array list. We're using an array list because we don't actually know how many lines are going to be in this text file. And an array list allows us to change the size at runtime. Next, since we're going to be doing file handling, we're going to do a try catch statement. Try. Then we can put in desired code we want to run. If an exception occurs, execute what's in the catch statement. After, we're going to just carry on running the program like normal. And we could do something with the exception variable if we want to. Now, we're going to do some file handling. So we're going to do file reader. File reader equals new file reader and we pass in our file path string. Then we do buffered reader. Buffered reader equals new buffered reader then we pass in our file reader object we made before in the line above. If you want to know more about how to do file handling, there'll be an eye up in the corner with a file handling tutorial, which I strongly advise you watch if you're not strong on that topic. Underneath that, we're going to make a string called current line. We're going to use this to temporarily store the current line that we're reading from the file. Then we're going to do a while loop. We're going to do while current line equals bufferedreader.readline is not equal to null. So what's going on here? Well, two things are actually going on in for the while loop statement. What we're doing is we're going to be assigning current line to the next line in the file. Bufferedreader.readline essentially reads the next line in the file. And then after we assign the next line to the current line string, which is what we made before, we're going to check if it's not equal to null, because if it's equal to null, that means there are no more lines to be read, and therefore we can stop our search. If it's not equal to null, then let's process that line we've just read. So we do phrases, which is our string array list, and we're just going to do dot add and pass in current line, which is the string we created here. And this string gets overwritten for every iteration of the while loop. Afterwards, what we're going to do is we're going to do bufferedreader.close and filereader.close because it's good practice to close them after you finish using them. Then we're going to do collections.sort phrases. What's going on here? Well, essentially, we're going to be sorting our array list into alphabetical order just in case the data provided isn't sorted already. Inside our catch code, we're going to add phrases.add e.toString. After the catch statement, do phrases.toArray new string zero. Basically, we're going to be returning our array list, but we're going to convert it to an array first because, because this function returns a string array, not an array list. You could make it return an array list if you want to. And that's it for the file handling. Again, if you want to know more about file handling, there'll be an eye up in the corner with a different file handling tutorial I have because we have multiple ones for Java. Now let's focus on our generate phrase list method. So it's going to be public static string array generate phrase list. And we're going to pass in string user input, a string array called list of phrases and a Boolean called case sensitive. String user input, it's our user input. String array list of phrases is going to be the list of phrases we have read from the file in our previous function and boolean case sensitive is going to be do we want our search to be case sensitive or not so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to construct a simple for loop we're going to do for int i equals zero i less than list of phrases dot length and i plus plus so we're going to be looping through a whole string array called list of phrases above the for loop Make sure to do array list string phrases equals new array list. We're going to be creating an array list that's simply going to be used to store all the phrases that we want to actually display. Make sure you do this above your for loop. Inside the for loop, we're going to have our first if statement. So we're going to do a different type of check depending if it's case sensitive or not. So we're going to do if case sensitive, which is checking for case sensitive to be true. As by default, if you put a boolean in an if statement, you're checking for if it's true. And we're going to have an if statement. If list of phrases i dot starts with user input, phrases dot add list of phrases i. I think this one kind of speaks for itself. We're checking the current element of the list of phrases array and we're checking if it starts with the user input. As that means the user could 
potentially be on the path to typing in this phrase and therefore we want to suggest it to them. Going back to our example, let's say hypothetically the user input sun and moon u. Well then, there's a few things they could be typing. They might be typing sun and moon ultra prism, but they could be typing sun and moon unbroken bonds or sun and moon unified minds as all of them start with sun and moon u. Then they all venture off into their own combination of letters. And if they, if, if, the current element of this list of phrases we're checking starts with the user input. It's a valid phrase that they might type, so we do phrases.add, list of phrases i. Underneath, we're going to do else, and next is going to be our check to, to do this check, but not case sensitive. Therefore, the case doesn't matter. And we can do this by simply converting everything to one case as if we convert everything to be the same case when we do the same check, since everything is the same case, it doesn't matter if the original input or not was a different case, because everything is now the same when we do the check. So what we can actually do is we can do list of phrases i dot to uppercase dot starts with user input dot to uppercase. If we remove, if we make everything the same case, then when we do our comparison, it doesn't matter what the original thing was. So literally, this is going to be the exact same check as before, but we've converted everything to the same case, which is going to be uppercase, because there's a really useful function for that, to uppercase. And then we do phrases.add list of phrases i. Underneath the for loop, we do return phrases.toArray new string zero. We're doing the same thing as we do with the get words function. We're just getting our array list and we're converting it to an array because this is an array function. That means it's going to return a string array. And this function will return that string array into this return statement I've highlighted. So where we're actually calling the generate predicted text function, it's going to just contain this array list that we, we've generated on this line, which generates one using this function. And that's basically it for the tutorial. So let's check the code in action. Let's hit for let's hit Control S to save our work and then hit play. As you can see, it's given us three outputs: Sun and Moon Ultra Prism, Sun and Moon Unbroken Bonds, and Sun and Moon Unified Minds. The reason being, those three phrases start with the phrase Sun and Moon U. Let's type in a true, so it is case sensitive. Look what happens now. And it still returns the same as before because these are all uppercase. So let's change these to be lowercase s. That means it won't return anything. As you can see, nothing was returned because there's no phrase in the text file starting with a lowercase s. Let's do something fun. Let's do an uppercase s and hit play. As you can see, it's returned nearly everything in the file because most things begin with the word sun or sword, and both of those begin with S. And that's it for this tutorial. Be sure to leave a like and a comment if you enjoyed. Be sure to subscribe if you want to see more tutorials. We will cover how to do this with more advanced techniques. And thanks for being a great audience. I'll see you next time.